So I'm not saying that I'm old or anything, but I do believe I'm old enough to finally think back to great moments in my life. And there's nothing that will take me back faster to those moments in time than music. So listen, music's not going anywhere. From that moment in time where a set of sounds came together to the point where we started calling it music, there will always be a soundtrack to each one of our lives. Each individual will be different. And I don't care what kind of music it is, what style, what genre, whatever it is, there will always be music that was there through our journey of life. Now, when I hear music from the 90s, especially from certain artists, it really feels like I just went into a time warp. It takes me back to a moment, and honestly, I can feel it in my stomach. It's like there's butterflies in there because of what that song signifies to my mind, and it just sends that to the rest of my body saying, do you remember this moment or that moment? You were hearing that song when that was going on at that point in your life, so now it kind of brings back those feelings. Now, I can tell you one artist, not the hugest fan, but all of this artist's songs, when I hear them, they take me back to different moments in time. And that artist is Alanis Morissette. So look, Alanis is an amazing artist. I don't have to be the biggest fan in the world of her to know that she's an amazing musician, an amazing writer of music. She does a lot of great things. Now, there was a three-year span in the 90s, the mid-90s, where she was touring for her highest grossing album of all time to date. It was called Jagged Little Pill. And the man that was sitting behind the drum set playing drums for her band was a man named Taylor Hawkins. This is the man that would eventually become the longtime drummer for the Foo Fighters. So Taylor played with Alanis Morissette for a few years. And part of me wants to say, if that was the only thing that Taylor ever did in music, which thank God it wasn't, he could always say he was a part of something groundbreaking because Alanis was on top of the world at that time. She was rocking. So I have to show some love to Taylor Hawkins, who was a fellow Texan like myself. He was born February 17th of 1972. Unfortunately, he was born in Fort Worth, Texas, and that area is crawling with Dallas Cowboy fans, and I cannot condone that. So even though Taylor was born in Texas in 1972, his family ended up moving to Laguna Beach, California in 1976. So really, his roots are there, if anywhere else. So Taylor Hawkins graduated from Laguna Beach High School in 1990, and he was playing with an Orange County-based band called Sylvia. But he ended up getting a really cool gig because he got to play drums for a Canadian artist called Sass Jordan. So the really cool thing about Taylor getting to play the drums with Sass was it got him recognition for his skill as a drummer. So people started to notice. They knew his name and they knew the skill. And that's ultimately what got him in June of 1995 in a studio playing drums for Atlantis Morissette. So if you're a rock music fan, you'll know that Nirvana had a different drummer other than Dave Grohl when they first started. They actually brought Dave in after their first album. And he is their most well-known drummer ever, period. When you think of Nirvana, you think of Dave Grohl in the drums. Now, also, the Foo Fighters recorded their first album with a different drummer. It was a guy named William Goldsmith. And after that, they went in to record their second album, just like Nirvana, and they ended up parting ways with that drummer. And he actually went to Taylor Hawkins because Dave Grohl said that him and Taylor were already associates. They knew each other, and they were building a friendship before they were bandmates. And he went to Taylor for suggestions on who they should bring in his drums. He didn't think Taylor would come in and drum for him, because he was doing so good with Alanis Morissette. She was actually way bigger than the Foo Fighters were at that time. But to his surprise, Taylor said, hey, I'll come drum for you. And that was it. He was part of the Foo Fighters. So the Foo Fighters officially announced Taylor Hawkins as their new drummer on March 18th, 1997. He made his first appearance with the band in their music video for their 1997 single, Monkey Wrench. Look, Taylor was an absolute talented musician. He was more than just a drummer. And there's some albums where they release some tracks where Taylor's dropping his drums, but he's also playing a third guitar on the track. There's some where he drops some piano. There's even some songs where he sings lead vocals. There's a few albums. He does some cover songs as the lead vocalist. And then there were some originals that he's the lead vocalist on on some Foo Fighter albums. So Taylor Hawkins married his wife Allison in 2005, and they had three children together. Now, there was hardly, if ever, a bad thing said about Taylor Hawkins by anybody that ever knew him. Most people said he was one of the kindest people they ever met, always positive. There was just not much to say bad. But the thing is, and there was reason to be scared for him, because it was known that as nice and a good as person Taylor was, he was somebody that was known to use drugs. So like I said before, Dave and Taylor had a relationship before they were ever bandmates. They knew each other. So they already had a connection. And eventually, when they joined forces in the Foo Fighters, I mean, they ended up becoming best friends. Dave has said it. Taylor has said it. Those two have both been together. If I have seen two Foo Fighters shows live. 
And it's not hard to see the connection those two have. They're always bantering back and forth, just goofing around on stage, and I can only imagine what they were doing behind closed doors. It was clear there was a connection there. Now, there was an incident in 2001 that Foo Fighters were in London. Now, Taylor overdosed from heroin. He was in a coma for two weeks in a London hospital. And Dave was there by his side the whole time until he awoke. It's well known that Taylor Hawkins has done so many tracks. He's laid tracks for so many artists and so many bands. His footprint is all over rock and roll. And in 2006, he started a side project. It was called Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Riders. He formed this with members of the band Jane's Addiction. So Taylor Hawkins and the Foo Fighters were in Bogota, Colombia on March 25th, 2022. They were set to perform that evening. Now before that show ever happened, Taylor Hawkins was in his hotel room complaining of chest pains. Now emergency personnel was dispatched to his hotel room. When they arrived, they got to the room and they found Taylor unresponsive. They attempted to do CPR numerous times, but it was at the scene that they declared Taylor Hawkins dead at the age of 50. So the day after they found Taylor Hawkins dead in his hotel room, the Colombian authorities, they released a toxicology report that stated he had over 10 substances in his system. Opiates, benzodiazepines, antidepressants, THC, and some other things that I don't think I could pronounce correctly, but there was never really a definitive cause of death released at that time. And, you know, knowing that Taylor had drug issues and finding all this in his system, naturally you want to start to say it was an overdose or a suicide, but most people refused to believe, at least the people that knew Taylor refused to believe that anything like that had happened. They just wanted answers on what did happen because they knew Taylor Hawkins was such a happy person and there was no reason for him to want to leave his family or this world behind. On the actual night of his death, obviously instead of the Foo Fighters performing, the stage they were supposed to perform on turned into a candlelight vigil in honor of Hawkins. A few months later in June, they had a tribute concert. Actually, they had two tribute concerts dedicated to Taylor Hawkins. They had one at Wembley Stadium in London and then one at the Kia Forum in Los Angeles. Both these had great artists, great bands coming out to pay their respects and tributes to Taylor Hawkins. Now, there was both situations, there was a rendition of My Hero performed by the Foo Fighters and both times they had Taylor Hawkins' son Shane Hawkins on the drums and this kid killed it. He absolutely killed it and you could see the emotion. He just, he honored his father very well. Now I don't know if anybody that personally knows Dave Grohl has ever asked him about this and as time passes I'm sure it's easier to ask. You don't want to ask certain questions when a death is so fresh to people, friends, family, anybody that knows the person that has passed. But you know Dave was part of two big passings in rock and roll. The passing of Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, because Nirvana blew up so fast and became so huge and it was just the grunge movement was such a huge thing for this country and for the world. And to lose him, that will forever be known and engraved in rock and roll. And then losing Taylor Hawkins, somebody that you've been playing with for years, years way longer than you ever played with Kurt and you became best friends with this person and to lose them like that to be so close to him I could imagine that was more of a devastating loss personally to Dave but to rock and roll you lost two amazing people Kurt for what he did for the grunge movement and then Taylor who's being labeled as one of the most nicest guys in rock and roll an infectious laugh smile and he would just be anybody's friend if you needed a friend they say Taylor Hawkins was the man you wanted to talk to all right, YouTube family, this is what I need you to do right now. I need you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. In memory of Taylor Hawkins, and that'll help me grow. That'll help this channel grow. YouTube will put me out there to a larger, more vast audience if you show me support. I love telling these stories. The reason being is because every person I talk about is just a human being like you and I. They just happen to go for something great, go for something big, and achieve it. That's what you and I can do. That's what anybody can do. If you go for your goals, have aspirations and go for them. Dive headfirst into life and don't be afraid. I believe there's nothing more dangerous than a motivated human being that has a desire to go for something, a strong desire. Because if it's so strong, nothing's gonna stop you. You're not gonna let nothing stop you. So go for it. You can be a Taylor Hawkins. You can be a Kurt Cobain, a Dave Grohl. Whatever you wanna be in life, you can be it. You just gotta strive for it and go for it. And you'll know. If you're really passionate about something, you'll know because you'll give every waking moment to it. You'll have so much of a desire that it's it's not work, it's not restless, it's fun because you enjoy it. Whatever it is, it could be anything. But whatever that is for you, I encourage you to go for it. This is the American Dream Channel. You know we dream big on this channel. That's what I need you to go out there and do. Dream big every day. 
And until next time, take care.